So our PALS classroom is designed around play. Um, we have lots of opportunities for children to come in and engage in open-ended play. In addition to that, we design play situations for them to allow them to meet um, play goals, goals that we have for them, whether they be speech and language goals, social goals, interact with other people goals. When we watch infants grow, um, everything they do is playful and in a play-based play way. The opportunities for repetition are so important. For example, if a child's learning to jump, if we just show them a video of this is how you jump and you get one chance to jump, that's, that's not how children learn. They learn by going out and having multiple opportunities to jump on things, over things, between things, over and over and over again. And that's where play-based learning gives children the best opportunity to learn skills. There's different kinds of play. There's the social aspect of play. There's exploratory play where children are exploring materials and ideas and scientific notions like gravity and things like that. And there's also physical play. And all three of those things need to, children need to have opportunities to be engaged in those. We get kids that play together, we get kids who play alongside, we get kids who just engage in constructive play where they're just building things and, and really enjoying playing in that way. We like to make sure that there's opportunities for all that play to exist because all of our kids have different play personalities. And we see the children on the continuum and our job as teachers is to keep moving them along the continuum so that they're, uh, they have opportunities to expand their play as they go along and then learn to work in groups, learn to be part of a group. So when they go into um, their grade one or their kindergarten classroom, they're gonna be that much more successful. All the children in our classroom have an individual plan. So we look at their individual plan and we've set goals for them. All of those goals can be met through either open-ended play or playful learning. Playful learning is more, we have a specific skill we're working on, but we want to make it them have the opportunity to practice it in a playful way, but we're directing it. Open-ended play is more authentic play where children are making choices and they're choosing the things that they're doing. Then we have to sort of slide in beside and incorporate uh, the skills that we want them to work on in that play. So there's sort of two different angles. There's being playful and us directing more of the play. And then there's more open-ended authentic play where we're taking what they're doing and we are tweaking it a little here and there so that they're practicing the things that we want them to practice. In PALS we focus on some fine motor learning, some gross motor learning and also some pre-kindergarten learning as well and when we are engaging in open-ended play we can do all of that. So if we're sticking rocks in Play-Doh. That's working on fine motor skills. A lot of the play we do is, you know, involves counting and building and there's ways to incorporate all that type of learning into play. I think it's important too that people realize play is messy. It's, it's messy in the materials and it's also sometimes messy in how children uh, learn to negotiate and compromise together and there's lots of opportunities for us to practice problem solving when we're playing. So we don't ever look at you know, a problem as being a problem. It's an opportunity for a child to learn a new social skill. And it's amazing to see how far they come with that with the right opportunities. 